Okay, so today it's about introduction to proofs. And in discrete mathematics, we have mathematical proofs. And we will speak about forms of theorems, direct proof, and indirect proofs. And the two major types or methods for indirect proofs, which are contra positive and contradiction. So what we mean by a proof? A proof is a valid argument that basically establishes a truth about a statement. So in math and computer science or other disciplines, informal proofs which are generally shorter or used. Why we need it for computer science students, it's very important to understand how we can verify a computer program um, is correct how we can establish that the operating system is basically secure, and how we can enable a program to make inferences in artificial intelligence and data analysis. So let us take a definition. A theorem is a generic statement that can be shown to be true using one of the method, whether we have a concrete definition, which is a fact, or we have other theorems leading us to this theorem. Or we have axioms, a statement which are given as a true, a fact. And then we have rules of inference, which we don't discuss in this class, but it is part of discrete mathematics in general as science. A lemma is a helping theorem. It is not really a completed one where the result which is needed to prove a theorem, and we have a more, um, a, we will see in, in the next class about many theorems and about another type of theorem which are called corollary, which are a result directly from a theorem. They are the, the conclusion, the result from that experiment based on a specific theorem. A conjecture is a statement that is being proposed to be true. Once a proof of a conjecture is found, it becomes a theorem or it may turn out to be a false. Now, let me explain what I believe is a direct proof. So if somebody told you about a Newton law, that is basically a child who was basically observing the falling apple from the tree and then he hurt him himself and then he invented a Newton law, that's completely rubbish. This is not the truth thing about it. Because this guy, he was studying the impact of the gravity force on objects. And he discovered that basically there is some force pulling all objects towards Earth and he did lots of mathematical calculations until he can conclude and prove that there is something called the gravity. Now, this is what we mean by direct proof. You have a concrete fact. You have a concrete result, experiment, mathematic, mathematical results and numbers that you can build on top of them. Now, I don't want to start a debate about whether God is exist or not, but what if we ask about indirect way of approving something? So consider this example. There is a footprint in the desert. What you can conclude? Somebody would say that those footprints are a, a sign about a force, about that somebody was walking on those in the desert at a certain time or a few minutes ago. How we know that this is a footprint based on our knowledge as a human, the knowledge that we build over time. So we keep saying if somebody was walking here, okay, then he will make a footprint similar to the picture we see here in the slide. And this is what we mean by if then. And if you notice about the if conditional statement to truth table, if we have if false, then true, the whole statement is what? Is false. 
And th think about it about computer program. Have you ever write in Python a code where you say, if false, do something? Never false part of conditional statement will make the program to execute the true part. And that's why, and you keep asking me, why if false, then a true, the whole statement is false. Because basically, you cannot prove that those footprint is caused by a car, not by a human. Because this is not how the footprint look like for a car in the desert. So a Bedouin was in the desert saying, and this is where this mathematical logic came from. He was saying, the, the footprint that you see is a good indicator about a force about a human okay and the law is a good indicator about the camel and the magnificent universe with the stars with galaxies with multi-universe with uh, with the fabric of cosmos all of that is a big evidence about the existence of almighty god you can see here that there is no direct way that we can prove whether God exists or not. But we take different sub substance, different impacts, different facts, and we combine them all together to prove whether God exists or not. Now, go back to math. In discrete mathematics, we always think about indirect proof instead of showing the direct way, the fact, the experiment, that we have a great law that we can use or theorem to prove something correct or not, let's say, if 1 plus 1 equals to 2, then I yeah, exist. This is what we mean by direct way of approving something or disapproving. But with indirect proof, you have to think in different way. And I will explain to you in details how we can reach this level. So how we deal with this in math, OK? There is many theorems that could basically hold for all elements in a specific domain. And the domain is basically all, for example, real integers, all real number, all uh, positive and negative numbers, and so on. So we call these are like the universal a quantifier, which basically could be saying as a statement, if x greater than y, where x and y are positive real numbers. Now, the word positive real number is basically the domain or what we mean by the, the scope of the quantifier that we are discussing, which basically this statement could mean for us, for all positive real numbers, x and y, there is x greater than y, then we can directly say x to the power 2 greater than y to the power 2. Why, why we are saying this? Because this is direct proof based on the fact that x is greater than y for all real numbers. Now, you might see two types of symbols here. Um, what we mean by quantifier. The upside down a, x, p, x, then q of x, this could be read as for all x, there is a function called p of x. That function could lead us, then there is a q of x. So, as example, all men are mortal. This is a, the quantifier, the universal quantifier for all, okay? And we have another symbol, sometimes we use it, which is basically the, the existential quantifier, which means there exists, there is one value in the whole domain that satisfies this quantifier, that satisfies the rule. From this two slides, all I want from you just to understand those two symbols, what they mean. So the upside down A means for every X in the domain. And the reversed E 
x p of x this means there is some x in the domain there is a value x maybe at least one single value called x that we can find in the whole domain so for all x p of x is read for all x p of x or for every x the function b of x is satisfied and for example if p of x donates x greater than zero and u is the the whole domain of integers then for all of x p of x is false um, if x donates x, x, x greater than zero and u is the positive integers then it, for all x p of x is true if p of x donates x is even and u is the integer then for all x p of x is false because there is more num there is even an odd number in the same domain u with the inverse x we can read in different way it could be read and interrupted in different way if you say p of x donate x greater than zero and u is the integers then there is exist at least one x in p of x which is a true and it's also true if u is the positive integers p of x donate x greater than uh, less than zero and u is the positive integer then there exists at least one x in the function p of x which is false now how you could prove for example something first you need to think about a trivial proof and definitely all you need to look here is when for example if we have p then q all you need to know is a q is it true then p then a q is it true as well now once a q is false okay once q is false you can basically say now i need to inspect it further because if as i said before if false then a true the whole statement will be based on the if conditional statement truth table it will be the whole statement false now let us take a definition and this definition we will use it in this section to prove or disprove any question exercise also in the exam if you have a question asking you to prove or um, something just recall this definition first and here we are just defining what we mean by integers n so n is even if there exists an integer k such that n equal to k this is like the generic format for even numbers any even number okay e could satisfy this definition n equal to k take for example n equal 4 4 is basically 2 multiplied by 2 take for example n equals to 8 8 is 2 multiplied by 4 and so on the other definition for odd integers we can define them by saying n is odd if there exists an integer an integer k that satisfies the definition or the rule 2k plus 1 taking 3 3 is the result of multiplying 2 by 1 plus 1 so this is a 3 take 7 7 is the result of multiplying 2 by 3 plus 1 and so on now so this is the definition for integers n whether they are even and odd that we can refer to okay now with direct proof the conditional statement if p then q is constructed when the first step is the assumption that p is always true okay then we take some other step to construct it using rule of inference, law of logic, or the equivalence of logic to prove the final step that we need to show that Q must also be true. So with, with indirect proof, always the truth table of the if conditional is going to be if P then Q means if T, if it true then it true. This is the ultimate goal of direct proof. You have to get 
at the tology. So a direct proof show that a conditional statement P then Q is a true by showing that if B is a true when a Q must also be true so that the combination of both of them if a true then a true is always a true. So in direct proof you assume that the B is a true and use a, the, the law of logic to basically find the final answer. If you fail to do so at any time, if I ask you use direct proof to prove, for example, um, any number is even, okay? You start with B, then a Q, and you fail to prove that. This means that you cannot prove that there is true, take me to another true value. So the whole statement is false. So the question will be disproved. So let us take an example. Here we want to assume that B is a true, okay? And we want to show that a Q is also true. Take for example, giving a direct proof of the theorem. If N is odd integer, okay? Then N to the power two is also odd. From where I need to start? Always start from this definition. So he said, in the question, I want you to prove that if n is an odd integer, so n based on the definition equals to how much? n equals to 2k plus 1, right? Now, if p then q, the, the, p, the proposition b is referring to the statement a, n is an odd integer, q is referring to n to the power 2 is odd. So, if we can prove that, if p then a q, then we can basically prove this theorem. Now, let us convert n to the actual value based on the definition, n equals to 2k plus 1, okay? Now, n to the power 2 will equal 2k plus 1 to the power 2, and this can be simplified to 4k to the power 2 plus 4k plus 1. Now take 2 outside the parentheses. 2k to the power 2 plus 2k. Now we don't care what we have in this parentheses. We can assume that there is another integer called r equal to 2k to the power 2 plus 2k. This means I will have 2r plus 1. And this is equivalent to the definition that we have just before that this n to the power 2 is basically what if when 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 we have 2k plus 1 this is an odd or even integer it's an odd integer and he's asking me n to the power 2 i need to prove it as an odd or even integer it's an odd so this means n to the power 2 equals to 2, two r plus 1, which is basically an odd, so we managed to prove that if n is an odd integer, then n to the power 2 is an odd integer.